In this video, we're going to go over how you can do 10,000 a month selling used books, CDs, and DVDs on Amazon, just working two days a week. This guy right over here does exactly just that. So he's going to break down his strategy on how he achieves, you know, five figures in sales doing this essentially. Sorry, man. Part time. You're not a part time. Part -time. Uh, this is it for me. I got to retire now. Um, it is super important to value your time as a reseller, right? A lot of people don't put a, a dollar amount on their hours, right? They just feel like, oh, well, I'm a full-time reseller. I'm a part-time reseller. I'm just here doing things, right? For me, I was, you know, I was the person I was out in the thrift stores for five days a week, some weeks, even six days a week. And I realized, well, wait a minute, if I have a more focused approach to what I'm doing, I can get a lot of my time back. So instead of going to two stores a day, why not go to 10 in one day, right? That's the argument I made to myself. And I said, well, let's give it a shot here, right? You're going to need thrift stores. You're going to need lots of thrift stores to make this work overall. If you want to hit, you know, over 10K a month, you're going to need a lot of thrift stores to source from because they're not turning over inventory every single day. So for me, I said, all right, no more five days a week. I have other things I want to focus on in my life, my personal life, other business opportunities. But I don't want to lose the income I'm making right now. I want to grow my income and get my time back. So I said, well, it's got to be sourcing. If I'm driving five days, I, listen, I used to love driving and I hate driving now. So I thought to myself, well, if I can do less driving, all right, let's do it. Let's run this for a few weeks. And I said, all right, these are my thrifting days. Wednesday, Thursday are the days I'm going to go out. I'm going to thrift my ass off. And that's going to be what I do. I'm focused. I go out on those days. All right, here's my route. Thrift, 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 in and out of stores as many as I can, scan as many items as I can, instead of going to one or two here and there. And then you kind of wasting time driving all over the place. So that was my initial step I had to take to start getting my time back was, well, how much time am I wasting driving? How many days am I going out? And kind of just, you know, if you don't have any purpose, if you're just like, oh, I'm going to go to the thrift store tonight, like me and you could walk around the thrift store and shoot the shit for God knows how long. But when you say, all right, I'm here to make money. I look at thrifting as a business transaction. I'm going in, I'm hitting the media and I'm getting out. I'm not looking at, you know, anything else in the store. I'm getting to the next store. So kind of normalizing and having routes you're going to run in those two days is going to make your life a lot easier. There's always things that pop up, right? It's not always two days a week. Maybe you get a, a bulk pickup or something you got to mm -hmm. fit in, but you can get it down to a point where you're only working 20 hours a week thrifting, which is quote unquote, like, the grinding life and, you know, people that thrift all the time are miserable. You can have a, you know, the, the power of Amazon is 20 hours a week. You're going to do over 10 K in sales over $5,000 in profit every single month without killing yourself. So the next thing I had was, all right, well, I got my sourcing down. Now, what am I going to do once I got all the stuff, right? I got, and for me, it's a lot rougher than anybody else out there. I'm on the third floor. I've been on the third floor since I started my Amazon journey. If I got a car full of books, they got to come up all the steps and get listed. And then if I have 10 UPS boxes, they all got to go back down the steps to the car. So nobody has an excuse of, oh, man, I got to list all this stuff. Right. So I thought to myself, all right, well, now I got to get my time back when it comes to listing. And, you know, I, I was using ScanLister for the longest time and Romer, you know, was in my ear every single month. Hey, dude, get back on GoTo, get back on GoTo because I was, you know, I, I gave GoTo a shot when it first came out. And I was like, yo, dude, you need to make these changes, these changes, these changes. And to his defense, he did. And I use it, you know, for the first time this past week and in, uh, in probably, I don't know, how long have you had the software? Dude, I created like the first version of it in 2020 and then 2021 didn't really talk much about it. I think it was like 2021 or 2022. I kind of like gave it out to beta and then it wasn't until 2023 till it was like functional. And that's probably when you tried it when I thought it was functional. And now 2024, it's just like, I mean, it's way better than it was. Yeah. I mean, and that software, from my experience from using it, just in comparison to what I was using, it is a lot faster and i basically just told you i don't want to i don't want to be an amazon business all day i don't want to smell like books i don't want to see books around my house i want to box and out the and out the crib as fast as i can yeah and i thought to myself well hey you know what let's go back give it a shot he's made crazy improvements to it and it is much faster than what Dude, I was you're doing. actually making me think of something though like because you're saying you live on the you're in the third floor right now yeah yeah so I used to deal with the same thing when I was in the Northeast. I would go to Airbnbs and for some reason, 
fucking I was like always in the third floor. <laughs> so so we, we'd go out sourcing books, me and my friend Andrew, we found 2000 books in two weeks, $14,000 profit on a road trip. It was fucking amazing. We sourced 12 out of the 14 days. Anyway, I used to scan all the ISBNs into my phone on my notes app. Then I would go up at the time I was using Excel or list. I would copy and paste them in Excel or list. And then I'd pay Amazon to label the books for me. So we're actually, Dom doesn't want me talking about this too much, but we're, we're having a mobile app coming out pretty soon. So you'll be I able see to you talking it. about it. So, I mean, yeah. it's out there. I see yeah, you posting a little about bit. it. Every time I talk about it, he's like, don't talk about it. But so you, you, you'll be able to scan uh, the book. It'll put it in your go-to batch. And then the, I guess it, the problem would be you need to print the labels, but I don't know if you would use that or not, but you could yeah. essentially, I mean, you, you know, as you're in line at the first bank. store, you can list all your books in the batch, go upstairs, print off the labels, are you dropping them off at UPS? Are you driving? Yeah, I, I take them. Yeah, so you can pack the box at UPS and label them. I don't know. That, that's probably like my one loss in efficiency is not paying for the UPS pickup. But then again, it's like it's a little bit of a workout for me. So I'm like, yeah. I'm, I have no problem really doing it. Mean, you can just print a strip of labels. That way you don't have to carry the books upstairs and downstairs and just go down and then yeah, as, 100%. As you're at UPS label them up, you know? Yeah, for sure. Because then you just got them in the box in the order that you scanned them and then boom, you're done with it. So yeah, I mean, that would be super beneficial. But it, it all comes back to efficiency and getting your time back. Yeah. And I think that's probably like it's probably one of the reasons you even created the software was, OK, well, it takes forever to use some of these other ones. So how can I save time in a thrifting business? And if you're sending in a bunch of different SKUs, right, in media, everything's different in the box for the most part. We rarely have multiple quantities of the same yeah. item. So you got to get efficient across the board. It can't just be your thrifting. It can't just be your listing. You need to look for processes in your business that you can, you know, basically enhance and be more focused when you're actually attacking these. And it comes to, hey, listing. What day are you listing? Saturday is the day I list. If I go out on Monday and I find a bunch of stuff, I'm not listing that Monday. It's going to sit there till Saturday on my listing day because I'm going to sit down and it's going to be, hey, I'm going to list today. I know what I got to do. I got all the stuff sitting here. It's ready to go. I'm going to list and you're going to get it done a lot quicker than trying to split that up in the different days over time. It's all about processes. And I know it's kind of cheesy like to hear somebody like myself. It's like, oh, you're only putting in 20 hours a week. But if I offer that opportunity to anybody to spend less time and make more or not the same money, you'd be a fool not to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. 100%. So okay, like in a nutshell, in that 20 hours a week, most of your time are you spending going to thrift stores? Is it the library? I know you do library pickups. It, like, Can you kind of walk us through like what that looks like? It's usually 16 hour sourcing, including drive time. Yep. And then four hours, I kind of like, it's, it's a little bit on the high end. Sometimes I'll do like 18 hour sourcing because listing the stuff is super fast, right? That's, you can, you can list boxes super fast. So it's about 16 to 18 hour sourcing, two hours packing and shipping. If I have the library, I just add that on as an extra day, right? Cause it's not like I work a full-time job. I have other things I work on, other business, other revenue streams. But for me, I have no problem adding in library pickup, but you can't trade thrifting days for bulk pickups. It never works. I've ran the math on this endless times. There's no such thing as a free pickup because you need time to go get the stuff. Yeah. You yeah. need time to deal with the duds. There's yeah. so much more that goes into it. There's no such thing as a free pickup and don't ever trade cherry picking days for pickups. You're never going to win. Your dollar per hour is just going to sink. And for the longest time, I was the person that, hey, I got a pickup today. I'm not going to the thrift stores. Well, I realized real quick that well, I'm making a whole lot less money on these free pickups than if I'm just at a thrift store scanning and, you know, pulling out all the good stuff right. that I know I'm going to send in. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, now people know how to make $10,000 in just two days a week. I just want people to realize it doesn't have to be the grind that a lot of us make it to be. Yeah. And I know there, I have no, I have no problem. If you want to be in this business 40 hours a week, and I say this all the time, you better be making a lot more money than me. Because if I'm only putting in 20 and you're putting in more than me and you're not hitting the numbers I'm hitting, then I think you got to take a step back and see what's going on. Are your sources good? Do you have enough sources? What do your processes look like? Are you spending days listing items when you shouldn't be spending all this time? So I'm kind of like a base example of how lean you can run a business and how much I, I mean, I'm almost capped out on how little bit of time I can you know, spend in my business to continually hit 10K in sales every single month. But it should be uplifting to somebody who doesn't have a lot of time. Maybe you're working full time and you want to resell, 
uh, full time. So you only have part time hours to put into it. The possibility is there with Amazon and media to not put in a whole bunch of time and still yeah. make a, a, a lot of money on the back end. I love it. If you guys want to learn more about this and follow Mike and get like live video content, he goes live. I feel like you go live like five, six times a week. <laughs> you go live. I, I mean, it's it, it varies. I usually I always pump out at least two videos per week. And then I got the membership where we host the Zoom calls yeah. every single week. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of content out there. And yeah. just understand that it's it's processes based. What we do is process based. Yeah. Understanding the data and being efficient at sourcing is another thing, right? I'm not I'm not scanning the junk, but this comes with time. You're not going to be an expert yeah. on CDs, books, DVDs once you start. But after a while, you know not to scan, you know, Tom Clancy, unless it's large brand. You know not to scan, you know, Susan Boyle. There's things that stand out to you over time. And it's going to take time to develop your sourcing processes. But as long as you understand, hey, you pay attention when you're outsourcing, your sole focus is sourcing on that day. You're going to level up your business tenfold. I guarantee it. 100%. You also have videos breaking down triggers. If you guys want to learn, you know, basically step by step, like his triggers. He says he doesn't share his exact triggers because yeah, that would be, what was your word for it? You said you'd be giving away the sauce essentially, but you do give away some pretty good triggers. And I've heard really good things in the community. So if you guys want triggers for Scoutly or Scout IQ, same concept, um, type in Mike the Use Book Guy, Scoutly triggers, and it'll come up. So yeah, thanks for coming on, brother. I appreciate you having me, Romer, as always. Heck yeah.